historical choice. Mm -mm -mm. The eye. Fourth act. Insect. Vice the pilgrims. Guard yourself from the terrible empty light of space. The bottomless pool of the quiasertium. Guard yourself from the terrible empty light of space, the bottomless pool of the stars. Expose yourself to it. You might learn something. Guard yourself from perceiving the inherent nastiness of man and woman. Expose your mind to it. You might learn something. Faith, as they now confess, is preposterous, an act of will. Choose the Christian sheep coat or the communist rat fight. Faith will cover your head from the man-devouring stars. Cassandra, the mad girl with the staring eyes and long white fingers hooked in the stones of the wall, the storm-rack hair and the screechy mouth. Does it matter, Cassandra, whether the people believe your bitter fountain? Truly, men hate the truth. They leave her meet a tiger on the road. Therefore, the poets honey their truth with lying. But religion, vendors, and political men pour from the barrel. New lies on the old and are praised for kindly wisdom. Poor bitch, be wise. No, you'll still mumble in a corner a crust of truth to men and gods disgusting. You and I, Cassandra. Let's get to some of this double X. The double X is a poem about Gore Holt. Was it Gore? No, Gore is the father. His son. I can't remember what his son is. Son's name is. I guess we'll see it. I guess maybe the son's name is Holt. H O U L T. He comes back from World War II, a zombie. And he starts, uh, I believe, having an affair with his mother. <laughs> which, which is a. Metaphor for solipsism. Where is the second part? Where is the second part? I assume it's coming right in. I believe that's where I want to start. Two, the Inhumanist. An old man with a double bit axe is caretaker at the gore place. The cattle, except a few wild horns, died in that fire. The horses graze high up the dark hill. Nobody ever comes to the infamous house. The pain, the hate, and the love have left no ghost. Old men and gray hawks need solitude. Here it is deep and wide. Winter and summer, the old man says, rain and the drought. Peace creeps out of war, war out of peace. The stars rise and they set, the clouds go north, and again they go south. Why does God hunt in circles? Has he lost something? Is it possible himself? In the darkness between the stars, did he lose himself and become godless and seeks himself? Two, does God exist? No doubt of that, the old man says. The cells of my old camel of a body because they feel each other and are fitted together through nerves and blood feel each other. All the little animals are the one man. 
There is not an atom in all the universes, but feels every other atom. Gravitation, electromagnetism, light, heat, and the other flamings. The nerves in the night's black flesh flow them together. The stars, the winds, and the people, one energy, one existence, one music, one organism, one life, one God. Star fire and the rock strength, the sea's cold flow and man's dark soul. 3. Not a tribal nor an anthropoid god, not a ridiculous projection of human fears, needs, dreams, justice, and love, lust. 4. A conscious god? The question has no importance, but I am conscious. Where else did this consciousness come from? Nobody that I know of ever poured grain from an empty sack. And who, I would say, but God, and a conscious one, ended the chief war makers with their war so humorously, such accurate timing, and such appropriate ends. The man of vanity is vanity, having his portrait painted. The man of violence at violence, most dire high tide is the fire and frenzy of Berlin falling. Five. And nothing, he thought, is not alive. He had been down to the sea and hooked the rock cod and was riding home. The high still rocks stood in the canyon sea mouth, alert and patient, waiting a sign, perhaps. A heavy, The heavy, dark, stooping hills shouldered the cloud, bearing their woods and streams in great loads of time. I see that all things have souls, but only God's is immortal. The hills dissolve and are liquidated. The stars shine themselves dark. 6. Cutting oak fence posts, he stopped to wet his axe edges. He considered the double-bladed axe. In Crete, it was a god, and they named the labyrinth for it. That's long before the Greeks came. The lofty Greeks were still bushmen. It was a symbol of generation, the two lobes and the stiff helve. So was the cross before they christened it. But this one can clip heads, too. Grimly, grimly. A blade for the flesh, a blade for the spirit, and truth from lies. Seven. A sheet of newspaper blown from the road. The old man caught it and read it arm's length and said, No wilderness, but this babbler comes in. What will they have along dusty trial and hang the men goring and all of his paladins why why for losing the war that is a fact and julius caesar a genghis khan could be honest about it not our gray hypocrites what judges what prosecutors what a panel down you apes down down on your kneecaps you talking villains take off your eyeglasses and beat your foreheads against the rubble ground and beseech god Forgive America, the brutal meddler and senseless destroyer. Forgive the old seamed and steaking blood guilt of England. Forgive the deliberate torture of millions, the obscene slave camps, the endless treacheries, the cold, dirty, clawed cruelty of the rulers of Russia. By God, he laughed. Winners and losers, too. What hellhounds. What a nest this earth is, he groaned and said heavily. If it were mine to elect an animal to rule the earth, I'd choose tiger or cobra, but nothing cruel or skunk, but nothing foul. 8. What does God want? The old man was leaning on the dusk edges of dawn, and the beauty of things smote him like a fierce wind. The heads of the mountains, the morning star over them, the gray clearness, the hawk swoop, fall of the hundred-folded ridges, night in their throats the deep-coiled night dying on the dark sea and all this hushed magnificence, violently rushing eastward to meet the sunrise. How earnest he is, how naively in earnest, nothing reserved, heavy with destiny, earnest as the grave eyes of a child that doubts his mother. I see he despises happiness, and as for goodness, he says, what is it? And of evil, what is it? And of love and hate, they are equal. They are two spurs, for the horse has two flanks. What does God want? I see here what he wants. He wants what man's feeling for beauty wants. If it were fiercer as hunger, as hate, or hate and deep as the grave, the beauty of things in, is in the beholder's brain, the human mind's translation 
of their transhuman intrinsic value. It is their color in our eyes, as we say, blood is red and blood is the life. It is the life. What is like beauty? It is like nobility. It has no name, and that's lucky, for names foul in the mouthing. The human race is bound to defile. I've often noticed it. Whatever they can reach or name, they'd shit on the morning star if they could reach. Nine. Or as mathematics, a human invention that parallels but never touches reality, gives the astronomer metaphors. Metaphors? Metaphors through which he may comprehend the powers and the flow of things. So the human sense of beauty is our metaphor of their excellence, their divine nature like dust in a whirlwind making the wild wind visible. Oh, Ted. The heads of the high redwoods down the deep canyon rippled. Instantly, earthquake shook the granite bone ridge like a rat in a dog's teeth. The house danced and bobbled. Lightning flashed from the ground. The deep earth roared. Yellow dust was seen rising in divers places and rock slides roared in the gorges. Then all things were stilled again, and the earth stood quiet. The old man coughed and said, Is that all? You have forgotten how to be angry. Look again, old woman. They were not half so disgusting the time you split your tea kettle at Krakatoa. 11. How quiet they are, the dead, humble and quiet, low, careless. How quiet they are. The most amazing and painful things have happened to them. They have no answer. They go aside and lie down in silence and shrink to nothing. The old man had gone upstairs in the house to trace a roof leak that stained the planks. He moved in the stale air and still rooms among the little personal possessions with dust on them. A man and his wife and their son had lived here. Now I could take an axe and split all the splinters. They would not lift one word nor one finger. Time will come, no doubt, when the sun too shall die. The planets will freeze in the air on them. Frozen gases, white flakes of air will be the dust, which no wind ever will stir. This very dust and dim starlight glistening in dead wind, the white corpse of wind, and the galaxy will die. The glitter of the Milky Way, our universe, all the stars that have names are dead. Fast is the night. How you have grown, dear night, walking your empty halls. How tall. A skeleton, 12. A skeleton with hair and teeth. A black hound bitch crawled from a bush and groveled at the old man's feet. He was in the dooryard, admiring the vast red ostentation of a December sundown. And when he looked, the dog's eyes were green with famine. He said, you have been... You have been betrayed by someone, but hungry freedom is better than a bad master. She moaned in her throat. He went in and fetched food, but the first bite, the long teeth pierced his hand. Blood ran on the knuckles. Then he laughed and said, what, are you human? She erected all the hair on her back, snarling and sprang, and was kicked down and stood crying far off. Neither, he said, am I, not entirely, sopping the bread in his own blood for savor and he tossed it to her. In the morning, she was at the door. He fed her and said, go your ways, but she would not. He said, you are fed and free. Go your ways, and flung stones at her, but she crawled, but she crawling returned. He said, must you have security also? Stay, slave. Uh, yeah. Jeffers got canceled. Double axe and foam. This is a fourth engine minute. Wow, 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 w